So the pressure is 2,000. We already did it together. From when we go from 2,000 to 750, how much did we need, right? We did that. And the answer that we got is um, 3 million something. Uh, okay. So we get three, not three million, 300,000 BD per hour. So we did that together. You still remember that? Yes? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. This part is about the assumption of water bar temperature. Why? How do you know that we have to assume 180? How do you know that? <coughs> you probably don't. Okay. It can be 150, it can be 170, it can be 180, 190, 200. So in this case, you basically just pick one. So that number should be given, but if it is not given, you need to put something there. Okay? And the recommended value is 180 Fahrenheit. It's not too hot to make water evaporate. So if it's too hot, water will coming out, evaporate, and then you have to put water in from time to time, right? If it's too hot. So 180 is a recommended value to use for water temperature in the bath. However, it can be it could be colder than that. Okay, when we know that it's 180, we know that if the gas temperature is 71, is that given? Yeah. Yes, we use single pass coil to heat from 171 to 125. We did that already. Okay. Outlet gas temperature 125. You know where is this from? Yes. Joseph Clark. Where's Joseph? Yeah. Show. Sure. I call you already. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Did do you know how to get 71 and 125? Uh, 71 and 125 come from this like well. Come from this graph. We heat from 71 to 125. Joseph Black, you know how to do that? You got it. You got it, okay. This is the same as the last one. So we heat from 71 to 175, and that will require 300,000 BTU per hour. You recall that. That is done, okay. Now we're going to look at the um, log mean temperature. We know that the bar temperature is every the coldest temperature is at the inlet, which is 71 Fahrenheit. The outlet gas temperature, Joe, is that before or after the shock? 125 happened before or after the shock? After? Before. Uh, okay, let's go back. 71 and 125. So we we heat from 71 to 125, and then we shock it. When we shock it, temperature will drop to about uh, 70 again, or something, okay? Or it drop to 61. When we shock it, the temperature drop to 61. So Joe, 125 is before or after the shock. Joseph Black. Before. Before. Okay. So we heat first, then we choke later for single pass. If it's split pass, we heat, we choke, and then we heat again for split pass. Okay. So we calculate the log mean temperature. Log mean temperature, put everything in the formula, I get 70, about 79. Okay. If you use the chart, you may get 80. So that number, I plug it back into Q equal to U A T sub N. Okay? Then I can get amount heat. Okay, you remember Q equal to U A T sub N. We already know that Q is 200,000. U is 94. T sub M is 80, then I can back calculate. 
fellow man, right? And that man happened to be Q over U over T sub M become about 40 feet square. Good? You can do that. So when I know that A, then I know five box reading, we need 300 K of BTU per hour. So those two, they are not gonna work, right? And we know that the pipe size that we use, it has to be two X, okay? But what we don't know is, do we have enough coil area? So if the coil area that we need is more than that, maybe we have to select one side bigger, or we may have to select that. See what I'm saying? So it depends on the coil area too. So when we know, first step, we know the pressure rating, we did that together, that's 2x. Then we calculate the heat required, that's 300,000 BTU per hour. Okay. And then we know the firebox rating. We calculate the U value from the chart. We calculate T sub M, assume that the water bath temperature is 180. Uh, and then we know Q, we know U, we know T sub M, we can back calculate A. Uh, Zachary Bolt. Oh, oh, I think I asked you already. Did I add anything? Yeah. P H U O N G. Fong Bui. Is that Fong Bui? Yes. Okay, Fong Bui. What happened if I use the temperature in the bath? Lower than 180. What if I use 130? What happened? Do we have more A or less A? Yes. Less A? Less A or more A? I get confused because you didn't say the same thing as other people. Okay, let's, let's think about it a little bit. Maybe together. So if I use less temperature in the bar, log mean temperature difference will be less. Right? T sub M will be less. When T sub M is less, A will be more. So if I don't want water in the bar that hot, I need more area to compensate for that. You see what I'm saying? If I use the water in the bar very hot, I mean, need just less area of the coin. I think your answer is correct. Don't worry. Okay, so if I use this 130, I may select, I may, I may not have enough coin area. Okay. Okay. So what if I do the calculation and it's right about, maybe I get 48.9, when I do the coin area, I get 48.9. And are we going to go to the next size because I get 48.9 instead of, or maybe 49? We may not need to do that. We may increase the back temperature maybe 5, 5, five and high, and it will solve everything. Right? Good? So maybe that's the reason that why they want to hide you. Hey, one guy said, we want the next bigger size. He said, oh, just put the back temperature 5, 5 and high up, and it will do everything just right. They want to hire you instead of the one who say spend more money, right? Everyone can do it. Next is split coin. So this time we will try to do more. We heat it, we shock, we heat it again, and we want the outlet at the very end to be one twenty Fahrenheit. So when it come out, we want it hot, maybe as per the gas contract. <coughs> So from example one, temperature drop to 61 Fahrenheit after, after the shock. So after the shock, we heat it again to 120. So what do we do? We calculate the U value or we read the chart to get the U value. That's 94, right? We know that the pipe size of 2X will do the job. Okay, we just select 2X or bigger size. If you withstand the pressure rating, um, and then we can calculate log mean temperature. So coil two, working pressure. They say okay, coil one before the shock, three thousand. Because if there's a shut in, 
that three thousand. After the show, they say, okay, maybe we use a little bit uh, weaker pipe, just seven fifty. Uh, but they say, okay, just use two inch X heavy for both cases. That that's a reason that maybe two inch X heavy tube is not really required. But for the small pipe, just use everything the same. Is maybe more versatile or maybe easier. Okay. So just put everything the same. So a little bit more expensive, but yes. After the choke, it doesn't need to be able to withstand shut-in pressure? Because if it gets shut-in <coughs> downstream of the choke, the, that pipe after that is going to see shut-in pressure, is it not? It will see the shut-in pressure. And if you're only ready to blow up, right? If it blow up, sir. All right. So we, if we don't think that um, there's going to be shut-in or anything, we may go with some other. So when it shut in, and we don't shut in on the shock itself. Yeah. We didn't close the shock. If we close the shock, it's fine. But if uh, there's a problem downstream, so the gas pipeline decide, oh, we somehow has water in it, and it closed. They, they will try to tell us, but sometimes if there's an emergency shutdown of the pipeline for the gas pipeline, they close it over there, the pressure will start build up, build up, build up. So maybe, yes, it's a good idea to have both pipe to withstand the shutdown pressure. <laughs> During the <clears throat> heating calculation, they say, okay, after the shock is 750, okay, uh, flow temperature 61, but we want it to come out at 120F. So right under the shock is 61, but we want it to be warmer than 61. We want it 120. Uh, and that will be different. 750. Where does that come from? We need a bubble. We do you know where is that from? It's had to come from the shaft. Let's go back to that shaft. That S-curve shaft. So when I, I shock it, it is at that point. Right? But I want to heat it again. Heating at constant temperature. So enthalpy is a thermodynamic property. It represents the total heat of the system. Okay? Entropy represents the disorderness of the system. So I heat it more from 61 to 120. You see that 120? I read this y-axis. The difference will tell me BTU per pound mole. Got it? That's how they get 750 from. That's from heating again after the shock. It's from this chart. Okay. That's where 750 come from. From figure two, given the flow rate, three minutes like we put, we can calculate BTU per hour, I don't really give you that chart, so you can calculate it, right? You can convert from Bamo to cubic foot. Uh, maybe there's more engineering over there. U value is depend on the pipe size, so since we use the same pipe, U value is the same, right? And then we calculate T sub M. GTD, greatest temperature different, least temperature different. Do that, calculate T sub M, I get 85, okay? Put that on. I get area. So before the shock, we need that much area. After the shock, we need that much area. Add them together, equal to 69.9. BTU per hour, previously we get 300,000. Later on, we get 240. Add them together. So if we don't want to have it come out cold, we want it a little hot, like 120. We have to put one here. We need 540 BTU per hour with about 70 square foot. I understand. Square foot. So, what do I select? I select the next size up. Okay. Select the next size up. Why not I just make the water in the bath a little hotter? Isn't that going to help? Okay. Uh, Stephanie and Bui. Okay, Stephanie. 
I found that the heat required is 540. Okay, the heat required is 540. The bar temperature is 180 Fahrenheit. From the available model, I have one of them that is 500,000. Stephanie, do you think, can we just increase the bar temperature so that we can we avoid to go one size up? Yes or no? Yeah. Why not? What's your reason? Engineering reason? Okay, maybe there's a, a lot more engineering in it. Okay, next from Stephanie, Richard B. Cantu? Richard. Okay, Richard, why we cannot just heat it up to compensate for that big you per hour? I don't know, I feel like you can, according we to We can, yeah, 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 you think, who think we can? Just you? Wrong answer. <laughs> we cannot. Okay. If you think we can heat it up a little bit more to compensate for that video per hour, wrong. Okay, that's wrong. Look, we produce that five box. Doesn't matter on what temperature that you make. We have just that much BTU coming out per hour. That five box have the rating of that BTU per hour. That's the amount of heat that it generates. Okay, doesn't matter on what temperature of water that you 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 want to make it. Okay. It generates that much heat. If you require more heat, that small firebox ready cannot do it. You may have 180, 181, 185, or whatever. It may not do more than 180 at that firebox ready. That one can happen. Or even if it's do, maybe 200 Fahrenheit, when you have gas, it cold, the temperature will drop, and you will not be able to bring it back over there. And 200 Fahrenheit. So that is the amount of heat that generated. We do conservation of energy. If we require more energy, more temperature doesn't mean more energy. Okay. So we need a bigger size. Okay. Got it? Don't, don't try to. You have to go to the next step up, right? Question: We generate that much heat, but we if we need more heat, more temperature doesn't mean more heat. Okay. Maybe it may not be able to do 200F all the time that we want because the firebox rating is too small. So the temperature that it can do, that Silva's recommend is 180. So on the split coin, we select that for firebox rating to inch X heavy and the coin area that is enough to uh, accommodate that 70 uh, square foot. Good? So this, you have to locate this in that. So the exam, the exam will be, give you several shafts, give you the composition, give you pressure rating of the pipe, and ask you, okay, the only question I ask is, like, the actual table is longer than this, okay? I ask you, which one do you want to use? Which line heater? Just that. Okay, and you show how to get that. Good? All right, maybe that's next homework. That is not in this homework. Okay, this is a lot of temperature difference. I don't plan to, to give you this chart. No, this chart won't be available. But you, when you do homework, or you actually work, you can use this chart to double check your calculation. Okay? Erosional velocity. Okay, this thing, also has to do with this previous calculation. This previous calculation maybe doesn't work. Even though it fit with the pressure rating, firebox rating, the area required, everything is good, maybe it doesn't work. The last step is to check erosional velocity. Okay. Maximum velocity limit consideration are for erosion, noise, water hammer, like when the water makes something strain in your pipe and it boom, and the pump bursts. So minimum velocity with consideration 
if the velocity is too small, we're going to leave some liquid in the pipe, we're going to leave some sand in the pipe and it accumulates, and then eventually it may accumulate on the low spot and block the pipe or something. We don't want that. So we don't want to go lower than uh, 10, maybe 10 feet per second. The number will come shortly. So this is a formula to calculate erosional velocity in a unit of feet per second. Okay. You obviously need to write that equation in your information sheet, and you need to know what is the unit. Okay. Maybe I didn't give you the unit that is our mass per cubic foot. I give you something else, and I don't know, you'll be able to convert to that. All right, that is density, and this is unit conversion. Okay, of course you need that in your information sheet too. One thousand kilogram per cubic meter is sixty-two point ten something per mass per cubic foot equal to eight point three something. Uh, next to Stephanie, Richard. Oh, Richard already. Douglas, Terry, Jeff. Dark class, let's see. Okay, that class. How do I get gas density? What is the formula to calculate gas density? Okay, does that come from gas law, maybe? Yes, PV equal to CNRT. Um, this is a formula, rho g equal to 2.7 specific gravity p over t z, and that temperature has to be Röntgen z has to be uh, what's unit for z? Dimensionless is compressibility factor. S specific gravity dimensionless that p has to be psi a. Use this formula. Oh, but look, if I don't want. Everything stays the same, P the same, T, Z the same. But if I don't want to put gamma or specific gravity in there, I want to put molecular weight in there. The conversion factor here has to change, right? So instead of putting gamma equal to 1, I decide to put molecular weight of 29 in there. So this number has to automatically adjust for that. So guess what? 2.7, I bet, divided by 29 will be that. Is it? Is, it, is that right? Or I'm wrong? Can you check that? Close? Close enough. So what I want to emphasize, I know that it's very easy. What I want to emphasize is it is not the same as the unit conversion that you learn. Never be the same. Because this is, look, if you do unit conversion, you will get one over that number. But the question that one, you want to ask yourself is, what do we do to accommodate for that new variable? Instead of put gamma in, this thing going to be 29 times more. So we have to divide it 29 over that. Okay? So then that, that is how we go from this to this. It's not quite unit conversion. Make sure that you can do this, okay? for something else. So, so this is done. So that's the formula. You may just write that down and use it, no problem. But you can derive it from here too. Of course you can, and this is a derivation. It kind of an exam, but don't write this down. If you write that, you can just copy it, but don't write it down. It may have been an exam. All right, Z factor. How do we get Z factor? You need to know, you need a chart, basically. So this chart is between gamma, or molecular weight, and it tells compressibility factor with pressure PSIA. Provided that we know temperature in Fahrenheit. Okay. What are these temperature? Is it standard condition temperature? That glass? Um. We, look, this formula, rho g has z, and we need that rho g over there, right, to get erosional velocity. So that class, what are you doing? What is that temperature? Standard temperature? No? It's going to be temperature in 
he got high. Then we calculate the erosion, okay? It's gonna be, because look, we are a little bit away from the rest world, okay? We want erosion, velocity in the line heater. So that better be temperature and pressure at that condition that we calculate the erosional velocity. So it is in the line heater, in the coil of the line heater. How much is that for the pressure? Isn't it keep changing? The pressure keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping. The temperature keep dropping. Sometimes it's dropped, sometimes it's going up. Which temperature are we going to use? Okay, next one, that class. Charbon A carbon. Well, Charbon. Are you answered the question already? So next. Yong Cheng Chang. Yong Cheng Chang. Oh, you answer already too. Scott T. Coleman. That's Scott. That's Scott. That's Scott. That's Scott. Oh, Scott. What temperature are we going to use? Temperature in the line heater keeps changing. Am I correct? Yeah. At one part it's hot, and after the show it's cold, and we heat it for speed car, it's going up. Pressure also drops. But pressure drop is a little bit small. It drops less than 20 psi per 100 feet. So Scott, what value of pressure do we use? But the, but it keeps dropping. Do we use the pressure at the inlet or pressure at the outlet? Anything that's fine, this is not much. Okay. But temperature, what temperature are we going to use? Right after the show, before the show, at the inlet, the very outlet, what temperature? Oh, Scott, okay, maybe the question is not quite clear. Brandon J. Column. Brandon J. Could you please tell me your engineering advice on the temperature that we should use to calculate that goal? Uh, I would say it's not true. Why? Uh, oh, you don't know why? You don't know why. Who knows why? Or oh, I should say, I don't know why either. Let's move on. Do you expect me to do that? Okay, look. When we do the design, we want to design for the worst case that can happen. So what is the worst thing that happened? We have low erosional velocity. If we have low erosional velocity, this means even if the gas velocity in the pipe is slow, it still erodes the pipe, right? So, what row value that will make lowest V sub D? We will use that row. Whatever temperature and pressure in the pipe that make row to be the minimum value, we will use that density uh, pressure and temperature. Uh, okay. My formula, my formula, my formula say rho g. So low temperature and high pressure will maximize my rho. So I will say that. So I will use pressure at the inlet. So if you don't use the lowest temperature, what can happen? It may not erode anywhere, but maybe it erode just right after the shock. See what I'm saying? If you use the if you use the outlet temperature, oh, there's no erosion at the outlet, but it's erosion right after the shock. It could be that. Okay. To be safe, so we use lowest temperature in the system, which is 61. Okay. But when you add together, maybe okay, 61 and 25, maybe it's over here, you get a little bit. Pressure, highest pressure, 2000, maybe it's over there, so we get Compressibility factor of R n, we use that to calculate rho. Good. Once we find rho, we find z, find gamma, we find rho, put it back. Value of c is about 300. Okay. Oh. Uh, z factor change with the molecular weight, so there are several shards used. Okay. Use the right shard. The molecular weight stay over there. Uh, what else? What about average molecular weight? You learned from the previous class, right? So make sure that when the composition is given, you can calculate average molecular weight. 
from the average vertical range, you go to the right chart to get the C factor. So when you see the exam, that is thick. Don't get panic. It's thick because it has several shots that is irrelevant. Okay? Maybe I give you the shot of 0 0.65, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.55, and see if you use the right shot or not. Okay? Alright. Uh, this is the same as last time, but uh, the last time will be clearer. So go with that. This is how you do that. Okay, convert the uh, molecular weight, uh, percent volume to molecular weight. All right. <clears throat> At the end, we have this kind of formula. C value, we use 300. There's a paper that tell how C value should vary. Maybe it's go from 100 to 400 or something. So 100 is for corrosive. Stop talking, okay? Stop talking. Please. So, C equal to 100 is for no corrosive. Uh, 300 is for, for the purpose of the exam. So, we, we just use 300. Typically, it's go from 100 to 400. Question? Question. You may have question, that's why you talk. No more question? Yeah, okay, you talk already, so you don't answer. Alright, there's a paper described about that. C value, where does that come from? Scott, Brandon, Richard, Richard, Del Prince, Richard, Richard, Richard. Where does that C value come from? How can people know what C value is there? But, okay, if it is corrosive, how do they know it's 100? Mm, but the per first person need to know it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, next from Richard Leonardo D E U T S H E. Okay, Leonardo. How can people find that C value? Leonardo, what do you think? <laughs> you don't know anything or what? Well, anyone tell me? They have, they have to do something, they have to do tests. They have to have some data to make it up, experiment. If they don't do anything and they just come up, hey, use 500. Don't believe that. Yes, question. It just depends on, so we have two values, right? Is it like erosional or non erosional? Mm -hmm. If it is very corrosive, it's 500. If it's not that much, use 300. The people before us already did the test. They use a corrosive material. They use a material with solid, but they use gas with more solid, and they find out. They do some tests. That's how we believe it. They believe what we believe what we see. They have seen it already and they just put it in a formula form. Okay, that is the erosional velocity. There's other consideration. Without any calculation, velocity for gas should be between 10 to 15 feet per second. And it should be less than 60 to 80 feet per second. Okay. This is to not make any noise, not make it check. If it's lower than that, we will have solid accumulation or some liquid accumulation at a low spot. We don't want that. Okay. Pipe material should also be considered for corrosion issue. If we have gas, modifiers or something. But most of the time, we just use carbon steel. Okay. That's for pipe material. Okay. Actual velocity in the pipe. This is the formula to calculate it. V equal to 60 something something. This formula, very important. Because if you have just erosional velocity, not going to do anything. How much is the actual velocity inside the pipe? How many feet per second? You need to calculate it with this uh, formula. Because when we know, standard cubic foot. So sometimes we have 3 million standard cubic foot. Okay at the standard condition. But that is a flow rate at the standard condition. In the pipe, pressure is higher, so it's shrink, right? So over there in the pipe, the actual flow rate is not based on three million standard cubic foot. It has to be some cubic foot that shrink to that pressure, okay? So this formula used to do that estimation. And that's a, the derivation come from P 
PV equal to ZNRT is over here. Uh, try to go through it. It's not that difficult. So both undergrad and grad should be able to derive that. Okay? Is it too difficult? No, if you go through it. Okay. If we don't use line either, <coughs> we can use LTX unit. LTX unit is a little bit more difficult to operate. Okay? So if you have very well, high pressure and have some light crude, <coughs> we may use LTX. Most of the time people don't use LTX because it's more difficult to operate, just that. Uh, let's take a look on how LTX works, okay? This LTX, it can replace line heater and dehydrator. It removes water and we can shock without blocking the pipe at the same time. So it prevents hydrate and remove water. So it should be good, right? But it's a little bit difficult to operate. So it can use to re remove water to be less than seven parts per million uh, cubic foot if operate correctly. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult to operate. The red in your brain is uh, inlet gas strain, shock to 2,000 to 3,000 psi until the temperature declines to 120. Okay, this is over here. So first we have uh, gas coming in. It has pre-fed separator. From pre-fed separator, we have uh, temperature still about 120 Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt the hydrate. Okay. So it's coming in hot, and this temperature by itself is due to melt the hydrate that previously formed. So when it goes through the coil, okay, it's coming out, and then it goes to heat exchanger. What is that? What is that? What is that? Is that a shock or something? So it goes through a shock. Cold gas, after the shock, gas is cold, right? Cold gas stay in here, hydrate will form. So when hydrate form, the hot gas that we use will melt the hydrate that form. And the gas that come up to the top will be gas without water. Because we use the heat from the stream itself to melt the hydrate. Okay. Yes. That's equivalent heat exchanger. Heat exchanger. Heat exchanger. <coughs> yes, that that's the heat exchanger on the top. Uh, please read this. I know that you can read. Yes. And maybe it's too boring if we keep reading that. But this is basically how it works. Okay. <coughs> it uses heat from the stream to heat it. Sometimes. Uh, you need to describe how hydrate works. Sometimes I delete this part and ask you, what is that? Condensate water. Sometimes I ask you, what is that? Is that water coming out from the top or gas coming out from the top? You have to be able to do that. I, I, I don't think it's a time to give yet. I have two more minutes, which can be two more slides, you know? <coughs> uh, please review this. Okay. And also this discussion, I'll just put it in homework. Hydrate inhibitor. How do we inhibit hydrate? We can put thermodynamic inhibitor. We can put kinetic inhibitor. And they agglomerate. So these three things can be used. Most of the time, they use methanol. Thermodynamic inhibitor means it shrinks the hydrate phase and wrong. Okay? It shrinks the hydrate phase and wrong. Kinetic inhibitor means it slows down the way they grow. And the agglomerate means it allows hydrate to form, but it doesn't get together. So if it cannot get together, it doesn't block the pipe. So mainly people use methanol and glycol. Okay? But how much do we use? To know how much we use, we have to do 
Hammerschmidt equation. So Hammerschmidt equation will tell us how much inhibitor do we need. Okay. And the next time we we'll go over that. So this will be over there. Uh, thank you for coming in and I'm just glad that we can cover the Hammerschmidt equation right now. If you have questions, please come see me. Oh, please sign up for the lab time. Next Wednesday, we have the lab. Preferably,